We're back again. We are looking at Olama, so interacting with local large language models. And today we're going to be back looking at how to extract structured text out of the unstructured world of text. Now to do that, you are going to need Olama installed. So make sure you download and install Olama. You are going to need a model installed. The exact model you use is completely up to you. I'm probably going to use maybe five, Oh, no, I might, I might stick with Granite. I'm going to stick with Granite 3.2. I'm, I'm quite liking Granite at the moment. Uh, Granite 3.2 is an IBM model available in a 2 and an 8 billion parameter version. And make sure you subscribe because we've got a bunch more videos coming up where I test all the different models with the exact same prompts. Uh, but you anyway, know, this video is all about extracting structured text out of unstructured text. So to get started, make sure you've got Olama installed. Make sure you've run the model in it, Olama run model command in there. Make sure you've got the Olama Python package installed. So pip install that. And if you're brand new to Python, check out some of my other videos, but you will want to be working in some sort of place you can run code. And I quite like running code in Jupyter Notebook. So to get started, we are going to cheat a little. We are going to take the boilerplate code directly from the Olama PyPy listing. We're going to clean that up a little bit. I don't need any sort of these hints here. And we are not going to go with why is the sky blue, but we are going to go ahead and get some, uh, what are we going to do? We are going to get some text and we're going to get some structured outputs from it. So to do that, we're going to give ourselves a bit more space. So let's go ahead and add some code. Where are we? Plus, plus, plus. Okay. Awesome. And so the first thing we're going to have is our unstructured text, and that's going to be in the form of an email. In fact, let's get ChatGPT to write that for me. Write a simple uh, customer support mock email for me to test my local LM extraction. Alrighty. Uh, we'll just get it to write this part. We'll write the rest of the code. So it's going to give us uh, a little bit of a mock email um, issue with my recent order. Hi, support. I recently placed an order on March 20th. Looking forward, John Smith. And there's a phone number and all sorts of good stuff there. So that's our email input. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, so that's now assigned to a variable. You can sort of see that one there. And what I can do is I can give ourselves a bit more space and I can take the word email because that's, that's our variable and run that. And you can see here, and I'll print that one out. We now have our email. So how might I get structured text out of this email? Now there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the harder way and the way I would not recommend doing it these days. And I'm going to show you the way I've been doing it, which will almost guarantee us to get a structured output that we can then make into tabular data and move around and do some cool stuff with. So first of all, let's think about this. What do we want out of this email? Well, we probably want something like uh, maybe the order number. That seems important. So let's make a note of this. So we'll, we'll just write this down. So we'll say order number. We're going to grab a couple of things. And now maybe um, they've got a delivery address. Let's have a look. Delivery. Okay, delivery. Yep, that's good. Delivery address. Uh, maybe the customer's name and their phone number. Okay, awesome. Cool. So we wrote all that down. And we're actually going to say, uh, we're going to say to the model, please extract all those things I've just noted down. Okay, please extract customer's name and phone number, order number, delivery address from the following email already and we are going to go ahead and use an f string and we've got a bit bit going on here with these quotes let's make sure that's right get rid of that one okay that's looking pretty good to me and we're going to pass in that email and we're going to put an f here because an f string means that it will use the format text format here so we'll paste that in and when i run this what we should get back is some sort of error Oh, I've used a single quote at the start and a double quote at the end. If you're going to use your quotes, make sure they match. All right. Um, oops, I ran this on Llama 3.2. Not a big deal. Let's see how it performed. Uh, here are the details extracted from the email. Customer name, phone number, order number, delivery address. That's pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to say um, format as JSON. And look, I can pass in all the bits, but I reckon it's pretty smart to go ahead and give us some sort of JSON formatted stuff. Yeah, not bad. Here is the extracted information, customer space name, uh, phone number, order number, and delivery address. Got a line one and line two. Not bad. Won't always be consistent. And so we can then pass 
the JSON structure. The problem we may run into, we might have to keep going back and we might have to keep saying things like, also don't include any other text and don't do this and don't do that. So how do we get around that? So one way we can get around that is when we look at the models that are available to us for Olama, one thing we want to keep an eye out for is this one here, tools. Tools basically means that these models have been fine tuned to support what they call JSON schema. And all that means is when I include a JSON schema format, it will return the data in a JSON schema format. So what do I actually mean by all of that? So let's go back to the very top. What we're going to do is we are going to go from Pydantic, okay, import base model, right? Next, we are going to create a very simple class and that class is going to be called details and it's going to inherit from base model. Now, if you do recall, we had a list of things we were interested in and we're going to grab those now and we're just going to make sure we get this right so please extract customers so we've got customer name phone number so let's get this right so we've got customer underscore name and that's a string uh we've got phone underscore number i'm going to start this slide i'm going to start as life out as a string and we're going to have a play around with what it will look like if i convert that to an integer all right so we go string for now uh why am i forgetting everything or oh, order number order underscore number, same sort of thing. I'm going to leave that as a string just in case we get some edge cases where an order number has a letter in it. It might be important to do that. Maybe not. If I know the system well enough, it might be okay. Order number and then delivery address. And delivery address, we're going to go with just a single line uh, for now. And we'll just, again, leave that as a string. Cool. So now that we've done that, what we can actually do is we can create the JSON schema. So to do that, what we'll say is we'll say JSON underscore detail. Or we'll say... Actually, we'll call it details underscore schema, and that's going to be equal to details dot model. Uh, model, help me out here, autocomplete model. I, I've typed this area, model JSON schema. I've typed it like a hundred times, and it's just one of those ones that won't stick. Okay, so we'll have a look at that JSON schema, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, what this actually includes, this is a standard, and so this standard says, okay, got some properties. Within those properties, you've got a customer name, okay, you got a phone number, you got an order number, you got a delivery address, and then it talks about what's required. Now, none of these are set to optional, but even so, it's, if it's required, the model will still be able to return an empty string, okay? So it's, it's a bit funny, but that's okay. So what we'll do now is we've got our details schema, and all we need to do is update Alrighty, so we just update. Down here, we've got chat model equals messages. After messages, comma, format is equal to details schema. Now, it's still set to Llama 3.2. We may want to double check that that does support tools before we go to granite 3.2 so let's have a look at models and we'll have a look at llama llama 3.2 supports tools looking good all right we'll stick with llama 3.2 for now we'll run that one through and there we have it so we've got customer name john smith phone underscore number now it's included the, the brackets and it's got the dash we can probably look to fix that the order number is looking pretty good hasn't included the hash it's just got the actual number itself and there it's got the full address now what we'll quickly do is we'll have a look at that phone number and see if what will happen if we change that to an integer okay so int run that one through and if we have a look now our phone number uh, no longer has those brackets and dashes and it's just got purely numbers and then we can do some smarts to reformat that overall that's looking pretty good to me uh, i did say i would use granite 3.2 so to do that all i need to do now is change llama to granite shift enter shift enter shift enter and i scroll down it's taking a bit longer to run um, i think granite's an 8 billion parameter model llama 3.2 i think i'm running a 3 billion parameter model so quite a bit smaller but there it is it's finished running and same sort of thing we've now got structured outputs and to really bring this one home, what we can now do, let's imagine we now go import pandas. Okay, so import pandas as pd, pd.data frame. Alrighty, shift enter on that. And you've got it. We now have, oh, look, an error. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's not a JSON object. That's a string. That's on me. That's okay. Let me show you what I did wrong there. Okay, import JSON, JSON.loads. Um, the reason why this has given us an error is because it is represented as a string and we want to make sure that our output is in a native uh, Python format, which would be a, a dictionary. So now if I run output JSON as pd.dataframe, why am I still getting, if you're using a scale, oh, I'm using a scalar value. I've only got one row. So if you've only got one row, you have to say index equals open and close bracket zero. And there we have it. I now have my single row 
data frame. Okay, uh, if this had more than one row, so if this was a list of dictionaries, so it had lots of results, um, I'd be able to run this without my index zero. So look, hope this was helpful. I've just been playing around uh, with tooling and Pydantic and base model, and I'm finding it really helpful uh, to be able to take unstructured text and get some really valuable structured information out of that text and get really consistent results as well. So I've got lots of videos coming up. I'm going to be testing all the different models. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of prompt engineering, automated prompt engineering. So using larger models to create smaller uh, prompts for smaller models. I'm going to be putting all these models through their paces. Um, I'm running all of this on my MacBook Air. I've got a machine that has like a graphics card and hopefully shortly I'll be purchasing a much faster NVIDIA machine as well. So fingers crossed for that. Um, so stick around, make sure you're subscribed and lots more videos to come.